So I was um, looking through some things the other day or yesterday, and um, I have one. I think this is the only one I have. Uh, Navarre Bible, uh, which is um, affiliated with Opus Dei in some way, right? I think it's published by um, not MTF. What is it published by? It's published by um, one of the <laughs> Opus Dei publishers. Whatever it is. Um, let's see. Four Courts Press? I don't think so. Um, in any case... <laughs> Um, I was reading one of the commentaries there and I thought, well, I've never really considered getting the whole, like, New Testament. And, and they have, um, commentary, uh, commentaries on the entire Bible. But, to be honest with you, I'm not really, um, I'm not, it's not that I'm not a fan of the Old Testament. I'm just not, um, it's just a little harder for me to, to, um, grasp, I guess. Um, it's just a different kind of... Um, I don't know, when you read the New Testament, for me, when you read the New Testament, it's pretty straightforward. There isn't, uh, well, the only mysterious parts of the New Testament are probably the book of Revelation. But all the stories in the Old Testament are just, um, I don't know. I, I was never really big on fiction, and I'm not saying it's fiction. I'm just saying that there's something about reading fictional writing or narrative. Uh, I just don't have... I don't know, the patience or the imagination for it. I don't know, just the stories are a little more far removed than, like, the stories in the New Testament. So, anyway, that's probably not a popular statement, but, I mean, it's a truth from my perspective anyway. So, I decided to get um, the, it's not an abridged version. I think they call it the, um, I don't know, it's not an abridged version. Because the New Testament commentary, uh, you know, um, Navarre Bible... It, it comes in three volumes. I think it's what the Gospels um, is volume one, and you have the um, Pauline Epistles, uh, I believe, are volume two, and then you have the rest of like the Catholic letters and the Book of Revelation as part three. So it's like I, um, a series that's probably three times as large as this. So this is just the, this one's the entire New Testament. Um, um, and I thought, is it just smaller print? Is it the whole thing? But what I read was, it's not even the same commentary. So, it might be different authors, I'm, I'm not exactly sure. But in any case, to make it shorter, it's, um, um, it's not the same. Basically, it's not the same, um, Oh, I don't, I don't like the way they did this. It's kind of damaged almost. Whatever. I'm trying not to have my OCD here. <laughs> um, so there it is. Um, the Navarre Bible New Testament. Um, compact, that's what they called it. The compact edition. Um, I don't know the specifics of what makes it more compact other than it's just shorter. Um, let's see. New Testament includes the full biblical text of the Revised Standard Version, RSV, Catholic Edition, all the RSV notes, um, short introduction to each of the biblical books, along with commentaries, notes compiled by editors at Navarre University Theology Faculty, uh, I think this came out in 2001. The commentaries, which are in the form of footnotes, help to explain the text and application of daily life. They draw on a rich variety of sources, early Christian authors, Eastern and Western fathers, church documents, includes Vatican II, and the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and prominent spiritual writers, compact edition of the Navarre Bible. New Testament stands independent of other volumes in the series. These are available mainly in the standard edition, 12 volumes for the New Testament already available, and 5 volumes for the Old Testament, of which one Pentateuch has been published to date. Whatever design, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Well, I guess, let's see. Um, um, standard edition, 12 volumes. Um, 
sorry, I'm like using my little over here. The standard edition in the VAR Bible includes both the Revised Standard Version and the New Vulgate Latin text. Oh, it has both. Well, maybe I should have gotten both. <laughs> or should have gotten the other one. The commentaries in the 12 Standard Edition New Testament volumes are different from those in the Compact Edition. And much and much more extensive. So they want you. They want your money. Uh, so compact edition for like going places i guess and then you have the lengthier one if you're a scholar i guess doing bible study um here's some reviews you can just read that for yourself pause it read it for yourself i don't know um let's see all right i mean i mean i like the thicker paper you know bibles tend to have like that onion skin paper i'm not really a fan of um Let's see, all right, preface, anyway, some maps, these people actually look at the maps, I don't know, if they're really helpful, so intro to New Testament, I'm guessing this is just the standard RSV uh, intros, the Gospels, Matthew, um, so, um, this might be a format that some prefer, right? Not having two different columns. Most Bibles that I have would split right down the middle, and then you have, you know, two columns um, in the commentaries. Take up a large portion of the page. So, um, let me go, like, I'm going to talk tomorrow, so I'm going to go through... Um, Matthew six twenty four, or the 34, oh, here. So here's a commentary, so let's take a look what it says. Because I'm going to use it related to mental health, but there's not really anything in mental health in the Bible or in the Testament, um, because the concept of mental illness, it was just not a concept that you would find in first century sort of Judaism, Judeo-Christianity, whatever. It's just a different worldview uh, than we would have today um, in terms of mental illness um all right let's see um so for those who um know the context it's about um it's just basically saying you know there are some folks who are worried about um you know the the, the things that would um you know take care of your day-to-day, -day -day, like, functions uh, and needs, right? And there are those who worry and have anxiety about those things, but basically the message is not to worry about those things, and God will provide for um, Charles. God will provide... My cat, sorry. God will provide um, for those, um, those needs. Um, you know, does the grass need, you know... It, is there somebody that needs to look after, um, you know, the, the, um, vegetation? Is there, uh, do animals, you know, store food for later? Well, actually some of them do, but, but, <laughs> I mean, it's part of their nature though, but it's not like they're trying to, um, you know, plan for the future. Basically Providence is going to take care of their needs. That's basically the idea. And so in the same, in the same way that God loves humankind more so than the animals and the vegetation he'll also take care of us so don't worry so the greek word there um uh is translated sometimes as anxiety or anxious um and other times it's like worry um but it's not the same thing as like modern concepts of anxiety like you're diagnosed with anxiety you know that pass this passage is not talking about um clinical anxiety right chronic mental illness anxiety it's talking about being nervous or, or worried about the future uh because you don't know if you're going to have uh the resources to take you know support yourself that kind of idea anyway um this group of teachings again stresses the interior and spiritual nature of the law which our Lord is bringing to perfection, Charles. Uh, 
Man's heart yearns for a treasure which will guarantee him security and happiness. Jesus teaches that the true treasure is good works done with an upright intention. There will be eternally rewarded uh, by God in heaven. That is where Christ's dis disciple should put his heart. So basically put you know, emphasis on the right things uh, first. Uh, once again, we can see that the righteous of the kingdom of God is the only thing that matters for man. A person who tries to do the will of the Father in line with Jesus' teaching will be given ever everything else as well. Within the passage, 22 to 23, are the little gem of Jesus' wisdom teaching. The Master uh, uses the simile of the eye as a lamp which provides the body with light. Christian exegesis has interpreted this eye and this lamp as meaning the motivation behind our behavior. The eye refers to motive. When a person wants to do something, he first forms an intention. Thus, if your intention is sound, simple and clear, that is to say, if it is directed towards God, your whole body will be sound, sincerely directed towards God. St. Thomas, verses 25 to 34 is really the context I'm going to be talking about. Uh, expands Jesus' teaching on the attitude we should have when saying the Lord's Prayer. Um, we should trust in God, our Father, in the midst of our ordinary daily activities. Um, so yeah, so Matthew uh, 6 um, is, is God's providence. Um, um, well, you know what? This is not the passage. I'm, is it Matthew 20? Is it Matthew 6? Oh, you know what? Um... Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, 20, starting 25. I thought it was lost. Um, yeah, so here it is translated in RSV as anxious. Do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat. The other passage I'm going to go over is um, the, the Martha and Mary, right? So there you have Martha, who is like a, sort of a busybody, um, making sure the food is right, everything tastes good, or whatever it is, cleaning and and she's like complaining to Jesus, hey, can you tell Mary to help me out here? She's just kind of being lazy. And and um, Jesus is saying, um, well, Mary's um, got her priorities straight because you don't always have me with you, right? Something like that. So um, that's always been the classic contrast between sort of the active religious life and the contemplative religious life. Uh, which can also be applied to laity, um, active and contemplative, right? The kind of laity who spends most of their time in church, you know, retreating from the world. And then you have the other folks who are, you know, trying to sort of Christianize the world to bring mm -hmm. the gospel to the world in, in some way. Um, all right. Well, that's pretty much it. I'm pretty sure the format's the same. I mean, I like Bibles that have commentaries, right? Because, you know, like the Augustine Bible, I mean, maybe I need to take a look at it again, but I thought it would have some helpful commentary. It, it, it's basically just the ESV. Um, you know, maybe it's the, uh, the thing about it, it's the binding or, or what, but there isn't even, like, fancy pictures in there. <laughs> so I don't know what really is the draw of the Augustine Bible. I already had an ESV. Uh, I didn't, it wasn't a Catholic ESV, but it was still um, an ESV. So, anyway, um, yep, it's pretty much, like, if you look at the, I guess this would be considered a standard version, at least the Book of Hebrews one. Um, maybe one day I'll get the, the hardcover version. Um it says it has the Latin, so. Um, oh, it does have the Latin. There's the Latin Vulgate. So the the majority of the book is really commentary, so that's what I was talking about. It was extensive. So I don't know why some why you would need the Latin in there. I mean, most people don't understand Latin or read Latin. So, um, I don't know, I guess it's helpful. 
for those who are Latin scholars. Anyway, um, so that's it. New Navarre Bible. If you're interested in getting it, then go and get it. All right, God bless. Bye.